I'm Jake Bruton, and today on The Build Show, we're gonna talk about all the accoutrement that you can pair with your blower door to be able to inspect your building and verify your testing. Let's do that now. Okay, so we are still in Virginia Beach at Jackson Andrews Building and Design. This is their modern build. Check the, the title down below and you can find links to their IG account and to the hashtag for this house. This house is, uh, uh, is the whole point of our visit. Uh, this is Sam from RetroTech. And uh, I think you can still see our blower door set up back there. We're running a blower door on the house. Uh, and we're trying for that ACH number. Yep. But that ACH number is not the whole picture. Nope. Right? Uh, you gotta know where the problems are. Yeah, so yeah. we're not just knowing, we're not just gonna find out that there's a leak and go, you know, we're done. Yep. We're gonna try to find it. So let's start with the method we didn't use today. Okay. And talk about why we didn't use it. And we have two of that here. Yeah. So uh, thermal imaging is, uh, it's like a match made in heaven for blower doors, as long as the conditions are right. Um, whenever we run a blower door, if you're inside the house and you're depressurizing the space, you're exaggerating all those leaks. So if you have a good temperature difference between inside and outside, it's going to make those leaks show up really well on that thermal camera. But today, uh, we don't have any of the uh, mechanicals installed yet, so the temperature inside is the same as outside, so we're really not going to see anything with this. Um, but these work you know, best when you have mechanicals and you have those more extreme times of the year, winter, summer. Yeah. Uh, where stuff really pops. But uh, the technology on this has really come a long way over the past few years. I mean, you have them now where you can just pop them into your smartphone. Um, but of course, just like anything, you can pay as much as you want to for one. So yep. they go up to higher resolution. So, uh, and just like most tools that are out today, there's apps you can use to take videos, save it on your device, things like that. So one of my big tips here is to pair with a blower door, this is fine. If we're just looking for the leak, this is fine. If you're doing real like building failure investigations, you're gonna have to spend, I mean, this is an order of magnitude more expensive or 50 times more expensive than this guy sure. here. I mean, you can sliding scale. Uh, and the reason is this has uh, a gauge on it so you can set emissivity, you can decide what material you're shooting, things like that. This just gives you that fun, uh, the color of the picture so that you get a sense of the difference. I also would say the biggest tip here, if you're even if you're just looking for the leak, I would shoot the whole house and then turn the fan on and shoot the whole house again, uh, because you can see you can see things and the changes uh, way better that way. You can see airflow across surfaces and things like that that you wouldn't see if you just went the first time and just shot it after the fan was going. Now it's perfectly acceptable to do it just after you start, but I like to shoot it before and after because you can see the difference in what's going on. It also makes a lot of sense to show it to people that way too. You sure. can say, well, here's what was happening. And then we turn the blower door on and that's why the whole ceiling got cold or whatever it is. One of the things I recommend too is if you're gonna use these pretty regularly, take a, a level one thermography course because you'll shoot a wall or something like that and you may think it's air leakage, but it may not be. It could yeah. be water, it could be moisture, uh, it could be a lack of insulation or something like that. So just because you have a color difference doesn't mean that's automatically yep. air leakage. It could be something else. So it's good to know, have a little bit of training to see what it is you're looking at. And don't get caught up in exactly what the colors are or anything. Try to figure out why that would be, why there would be that change there. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're looking for the difference in things. Exactly. Uh, let's save the most interesting for last. Let's okay. talk next about this weird red box <laughs> with a handle on it. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this is what's called a pressure pan. And these work best when you have uh, a home that's finished. So you've got drywall in, you've got ceilings in. Uh, you can actually attach this to the same manometer that you use with your blower door, uh, put it over whatever penetration, whether if it's a can light or if it's a switch box, whatever. Um, if you see a significant pressure differential uh, between what's inside this box and the main space, it tells you there's some leakage going on in that wall. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really varies. There's not really an exact number you're looking for. Uh, we say if you're just doing a code built house and you're getting double digits on that manometer and Pascal's, yeah, it's a leaky wall. So um, yeah, yeah. So the pressure pan's nice just to be able to spot check you know certain areas within a wall or a ceiling. Um, this one actually doubles as a uh, exhaust fan flow meter, so you can measure whole house ventilation with the yeah, uh, back so fans and things like that too. So the guys from Zender were out a couple weeks ago and they used one to balance every single port 
in the house on yeah. a Zender unit. So we have like a really accurate system that basically all we did was buy one more piece to go with our blower door, right? Yeah, but you know, but all the holes plugged up just like that, you know, it works as a, as a pressure band with, with your blower yep. door. So it's kind of a two for one. Uh, okay, so then let's talk about the fun one. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the way I look at it. And you guys have two different examples. You have uh, what looks like some sort of e-cigarette, and I guess kind of... <laughs> An e-cig in reverse. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a theatrical fog machine, right? Yep. Uh, I mean, or what is effectively, it says yeah. RetroTech. They're both, I mean, they're both fog machines. One's just a smaller handheld device. Um, this one's larger. You can, you can fill up an entire room with this if you hold the button down long enough. Uh, we were doing some spot checking with it today uh, with the hose attached to it, but... Uh, it's just a glycol solution. It's the same kind of theatrical fog you would see in any other kind of machine like that. Um, so that's great for going around and spot checking. You know, even if you have the finished uh, a house that's finished, you can have interior doors open. And if that's that room's on an exterior wall, you can discharge that into the doorway. If you're pressurizing and that smoke moves in, yeah. and you know you've got something to focus on in that room. In that room, yeah. So you're you can you can you can work broadly mm -hmm. like you were just talking about or we can be super specific. So behind our, our filming setup here, there are uh, lift and slide double doors that make. And when we started testing, we came over here because we know that lift and slide doors can be one of the problems uh, or any large door could be a problem. Mm -hmm. And we started blasting it around. That was the awesome part about having the hose on. And then we very quickly learned that there are weep holes, the, the lift and slide panels slide interior of the, the fixed panels. So that panel could bring water in uh, and then it would be in that track. And if there weren't weep holes in that track, you just have water that would potentially shed off of that, what used to be an exterior door that's now inside. And so it makes sense to have weep holes. However, there's nothing we can do about those weep holes in our final test, but they are just holes from in here to out there. Sure. Uh, and that can be really challenging to decide on you know, are the 12 foot by 16 foot wide patio doors worth it for air leakage? Well, on this house, they don't, they're not that concerned with it. This is important for them that, you know, the view of the bay. Uh, but you have to, you have to understand where the leakage is happening mm -hmm. to understand the consequence of that leakage. So that leakage is a, yeah, we can't fix that. Yeah. And it, the long-term effects are going to be minimal. Yeah. So. Uh, Although it is pressure plane wise, it is as low as we get, and it probably has some of the highest infiltration or pressure for infiltration. Now, we went from that to the highest exfiltration, which yep. this space I believe is 27 feet tall, and our upstairs is that tall. And this house has concealed gutters all the way around, and those concealed gutters come into the building envelope, and so the plumber's been up running three inch PVC, and again, Sam was able to poke that hose way up high, and we immediately found that they hadn't, uh, they hadn't flashed or even insulated around some of those yet. Uh, not that they weren't going to, it's just they weren't done yet. So we found three inch PVC going through a five inch hole that was just wide open and we were running a blower door. And it's like the quickest way to screw your blower door number is not be done with your air sealing. Exactly. Uh, and we wouldn't have found it without this. And a key point too, when you're using the smoke, we flip the fans around to pressurize the house. Uh, that way it's pushing that smoke outside. Uh, so if you have someone inside and someone outside looking for that, that smoke to come out, uh, it makes it so much easier. I mean, that's really the whole point here is air is invisible. It's, it's hard to track it down on its own. So any way we can make it visible, make those air currents show up in one shape or form or another, whether it's smoke or on a thermal camera, uh, that's essentially what we're trying to do here. And so my last like pro tip for finding a leak uh, besides just think about where the what leak might be, which sounds super basic, but sometimes we turn the door on and we've shut the job site down for the day and all we can hear is the fan going and we, we can't focus on anything other than the numbers. Stop and think about logically where, where have you poked holes that you might have forgotten about or who was the least skilled or least invested in the project on the job site, did they know? And my other one is sometimes if we have a quiet job site, unlike today, you can hear equipment <laughs> moving around, uh, I'll turn the door up to a hundred and then I'll just walk around and put my head up against things because you can hear the, the air flowing through small holes. Sometimes you get a whistling. Yeah. You can do that on the outside. Sometimes if it's a quiet job site, we had a house that we built in the country a couple years ago that we literally in the attic could hear the air coming through and we just had to crawl around long enough to find it. Yep. So I've heard house wrap rattling on, on the side of windows too. There you go. So, yeah. 
So the, the point is that that blower door is not the full picture. This, and using your brain, is the full picture. Do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that really sums it up. Um, and the best way to do it is just try it out. Um, you know, every house is different, um, especially if you're getting into existing homes, if you're trying to do a rehab. If you didn't build it, you're not really sure what's there. Um, this is how you find out. Okay. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, follow everybody that is making Build Show Network videos. There's a ton of content now every week, and there is great content out there that I'm learning a lot from, and I'm really happy to be involved. Don't forget to follow me. It's Jake.Bruton. And don't forget to check out the podcast, the Unbuild It podcast on Instagram. We'll lead you to where we need to be. Sam, cool. thanks. Thanks for having me.